It's Tuesday, September 11th, 2001. It was a beautiful day. My partner and I had just commented the clear blue skies, not a cloud to be seen. And then the emergency call transmitted over the police radio. Central, be advised. A plane has just hit the North Tower of the World Trade Center. My partner and I were assigned to work the Queen South area of New York City, the Vice Central, we're heading to Manhattan. During our emergency response, uh, another call was transmitted. This call more frantic. Central, be advised, a, cent a second plane has just struck the other tower. My partner and I looked at each other. We knew this was a terrorist attack. Now both the North and South Towers are on fire. Further information transmitted. Central, these planes were at the size of commercial airliners. During our response, then we could see the black smoke billowing into the sky and thousands of pieces of paper floating in the air. I'm assuming office paper from the business offices that were struck by the planes. We're a few minutes from the location and the traffic heading away from the city is almost at a standstill. At this time, anybody who is involved with the emergency response in is trying to get their own message over the radio. The one of the many transmissions that we heard, I thought I would never hear in my career. Central, notify the military. Now we're going to, I'm going to introduce the moment of silence and the bell ceremony. There were 2,974 fatalities that day, including the 19 hijackers. More have since passed away or after suffering from the after effects of those attacks. 246 persons on the four planes died as there were no survivors. 2,603 died in New York City in the towers on the ground. 125 people died at the Pentagon and at the time 24 people remained listed as missing. 55 were United States military personnel. All were lost on flight number 93 that crashed in Somerset County, Pennsylvania after heroic effort stopped the aircraft that was supposedly headed for the White House. More than 90 countries lost citizens in the World Trade Center attacks. A total of 411 emergency workers who responded to scenes died as they attempted to implement rescue and fire suppression efforts. The Fire Department of New York lost 341 firefighters and two paramedics. New York Police Department lost 23 officers. The Port Authority lost 37 officers. Private Medical Services lost eight additional EMTs and paramedics. While others were running out, many were running in. Aren't they the heroes? As my partner and I approached the location, we noticed human remains on the roadway. I assume being, being from either the plane or from the towers where the plane has struck. At the scene, we had just parked our vehicles and someone is yelling out. We have two more planes coming in and they cannot be identified. You could hear the loud roar coming from above, sounding like steady thunder, getting louder and closer. And you can't see them because of the surrounding buildings. We all took cover, thinking this is it. Then with a sigh of relief, after looking up, I said, thank God, the good guys are here. Two F-16s are now circling over our location. While all the first responders are getting together any piece of emergency equipment that can be utilized at the scene, you would hear loud exploding noises. Those sadly to witness were from people who had fallen from the towers. Any first responder entering the towers had to be careful from either falling people or falling debris. The group I'm with are hurrying up the street, not only with emergency life equipment, but also heavy weapons. This is a terrorist attack. Anything can happen now. While observing the South Tower in the background, we decide to head towards the North Tower. We'll be coming to that first. Then the unthinkable happens. The South Tower is coming straight down and fast. It's almost, I'm almost not believing. I'm believing what I'm seeing or hearing. The noise was tremendous. By the time my mind registered to get out of harm's way, it was only a matter of minutes and seconds that we were engulfed with the smoke and the dust of the South Tower. You could feel the forceful air rushing by you as you're in darkness on minutes on end. 
And being in a crouched position with my head down, I see a storm drain, my feet in plain view. Hey, I'm alive. All is silent, but the alarm sounding from the Scott air packs from the firemen and the, and the police uh, that are wearing. Rescue mode is still in high gear, is compounded with the shock of the collapse of the South Tower. Being first responders, safety and rescue is our priority. While searching and digging for survivors, the unthinkable happens again. The North Tower is now coming down. The smoke and dust clears, and again, rescue mode is in high gear. Four or more hours had gone by, and I was finally able to get in touch with my wife, to let her hear my voice, that I'm still alive. The relief of stress in her voice and the release of my emotions were well needed at that moment. Late in the afternoon, your mind is still trying to comprehend what has happened. You look around, firemen, law enforcement, EMS, military, iron workers, construction workers, heavy equipment operators, utility workers, Red Cross, priests, Salvation Army, vendors, store owners keeping their doors open. Whatever you need, it's yours. While digging in the du debris, I looked around in the surrounding area where tall buildings shadowed over the site where the trade center once stood and worrying about secondary devices going off, finishing off every rescue worker at the scene. My attention was finally interrupted when I looked to my left and noticed a first responder from the west coast of the United States. I said to him, thank you for being here. His reply, we came as fast as we could. Nighttime has now fallen upon us. Emergency lighting is set in place and turned on. The horrific act of terrorism is now illuminated so we can continue rescue operations, also to keep us safe from the hanging debris of steel, concrete, and glass, or from falling into deep voids that your hand like can't even see the bottom. Dogs from the canine units that were there from the beginning are searching around for any signs of life and are carefully watched over by their handlers and still some of these dogs were injured from the sharp pieces of steel and glass. If one of the dogs had a possible lead on a person in a void or under any debris, heavy equipment would be shut down. Hearing devices that would amplify sound would be uh, activated with conjunction of high-tech cameras to seek out any form of life. Before long, it's early morning hours of September 12th. Some of us are leaving Ground Zero to head back to our base or to get home uh, for fresh supplies for the upcoming work. While walking away from Ground Zero, doctors and nurses are ready for any signs of life and their co-workers standing by hospitals. Further from the site were parked refrigerator truck trailers that were going to be used in conjunction with the temporary morgues. Also crowds of people clapping their hands and many waving American flags yelling out thank you and signs reading, you are our heroes. God bless you in your work. Family members, still in the, family members still in the area close to ground zero wait for any word of their loved ones, rescued or recovered. Weeks have gone by. The rescue is now a recovery. At ground zero, when a person was recovered, that person would be placed in the flag draped stokes. Before the stokes was to be moved, heavy equipment would be shut down. All the workers at the scene would form a line of attention with hand salutes or heads bowed and hands over heart. From the point of recovery to the awaiting ambulance for the departure, you could hear a pin drop. One night, my partner and I noticed a veteran firefighter away from everyone else. Concerned about his safety, we walked to, over to him. He was digging and searching this area. I asked him, do you need help? He looked at me with tears in his eyes and said, I promised my wife I would find our son. Months and months have gone by. The memory of different memories are now chiseled into my mind. Finishing up in June of 2002, I couldn't have been any proud of being involved in the rescue and recovery at the site of the World Trade Center terrorist attacks. Let's not forget the attack on the Pentagon. Let's not forget the innocent passengers on the crew and all the planes. Let's not forget the first responders who perished, in the, uh, uh, who perished with the victims at the World Trade Center. Let's never forget September 11, 2001. God bless America. Thank you.